Today you see two garments made from one t-shirt pattern, raglan sleeves, one is a dress, one is a cardigan. The changes you make to the pattern are super easy. You can do it too and you can have your raglan tee pattern but also make more things with it. Raglan bodice with a skirt, basic black staple raglan sleeve cardigan. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing. You know how much excitement and happiness I get from taking a basic pattern that I already know fits me, making a few changes that are super easy and transforming that pattern into other garments. The fit is the same, it's just a few different things that will transform it from something to something else and that is so so much fun. The pattern I am talking about today is the Rockford Raglan. This is a pattern from Love Notions. Remember that there is a site-wide sale live already at Love Notions, 40% off all the patterns until Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you haven't got the Rockford Raglan yet, you can get it for 40% off and also other patterns that you would like to get. If you would like to also support me, my affiliate link is down below. And if you buy through that link, I receive a small commission from there and that supports me. The Rockford Raglan, this is a pattern I have already made many times before. I already have a couple of videos already on the channel. In the first video, I made a black one with lace sleeves and I showed you a method that could save you fabric when you're cutting out. If you want to see how you can save fabric when you cut a t-shirt, have a look at that first video. A couple of months ago, I made two more and this is one of them. This is a cotton spandex, it doesn't drape. So I did shorten it because I thought it was just too long to have that structure. Took two inches off the bottom of the hem <laughs> and then I brought it in at the sides from the waist in a little bit. I brought it in so it's more straight boxy and not swing style. Here you can see the lovely V neckline. It's not deep. There you can see the fake piping highlighting that beautiful seam there. Both sides, I really like that. I also made uh, beige off-white lace version the same super easy to make I'm super happy with my raglan shirts just left it there and I think it's acceptable you can see it's nice and flowy fitted here at the bust and then it just has a lot of space there here's a close-up of the sleeve this is a short sleeve and when you don't have to hem it's always a win it just looks super pretty, super delicate when it's got those scallops. It looks like that on the back. There you can see the raglan seam. I super love this lace raglan top. Why not? <laughs> the way it hugs the chest here and the fit around here is so, so nice for me. I always knew I wanted to go ahead and use this pattern for other things. In the last video I mentioned, I wanted to turn this into a bodice and attach a skirt onto it. So that's come true and then at last minute I thought why don't I make this into a cardigan so so much fun and so easy for a full pattern review about the views the sizing the fabrics please go ahead and watch the previous video I'll just mention that this pattern has already been updated to improve sizing up to 5x you're meant to make it with stretch fabrics knit fabrics and Previously, I have made view B and putting some line out here so you can see that it's more sort of like a swing style. There's much more ease at the waist and hips. Because I wanted these to be closer to the body, I chose to print out view C and D. They use the same sort of body pieces, only that view C has an asymmetric overlap on top. So let's say this is view D. Okay, so I've chosen that view. I've printed it out. All these views use the same sleeve. So the fit around here is the same. The only thing that differs is the fit below the bust for this view. It's just straight down closer to the body. So that's what I've done here. I have used the shorten and length line and I removed three inches of length because from what I can see, this is more of a sweater style tunic length, the original one. And I want my cardigan to be just mid-hip sort of thing. For the long sleeves, I added two inches of length to the sleeves, which is a really common adjustment. And then I went ahead and had some fun with the front piece. That is the only piece that you need to do a few small changes to, and then you have to draft a neckband to finish off the center of the cardigan, because you're not gonna leave it raw. So the front piece is a t-shirt cut on the fold, it's extended, but not for the cardigan, it will have a cut in the middle of course. So let's see how to easily make these changes on the t-shirt pattern and how to draft this neckband piece. Start to wear me. You've been down like hell. This is the 
front piece and to transform it into a cardigan I'm going to remove a little bit from the center front because I'm going to be adding on a band there. I've just removed three quarters of an inch there. From the bottom up, the neckline is higher. I dropped it by an inch and a half. From this dropped neckline down six inches, from that height is where I started curving in to meet that neckline there. You have your original Rockford raglan, it would be from there down seven and a half inches. That's the proportion I'm seeing I want. So it's just a slight curve there that will meet there. I'm actually going to cut this away, cut my cardigan and then tape this back up. You know, this is going to be all chopped up. But that's the only change I'm going to make for the cardigan, the back, the sleeves, that will be all the same. I'm drafting the length of the band I'm going to need for the front of the cardigan and I'm going to divide this into two sections, although those two sections will be on the same pattern piece. This is the center, that is the mark where I started curving in like that. From here down, it goes straight down. The first thing I've done is fold away the hem allowance. Like I'm going to hem this. I'm just going to use three quarters of an inch there. So that's been folded up. I'm measuring up to that mark. That mark is where I started curving in to form that curve there. So from that mark down, it's straight down. So from this mark down, I want my band to be one to one. I want it to be exactly the same size, not shorter, not longer. So if I measure that, it's 11 and three quarters inch. And I have 3 eighths extra here to finish off the edge of that band. So on my paper, I'm going to draw the first section of the band. It's going to be 11 and 3 quarters. Up here, I have joined the raglan sleeves. So I've got them overlapping there. Uh, this uses 3 eighths seam allowance. So if you look at the middle there, there's 3 eighths here, 3 eighths there. It's like it's been sewn. This is the length of the neckline. I have drawn a line at a quarter of an inch seam allowance because that's where I'm going to measure from this mark up. So when I put my tape along that curve there, not along the edge of the paper, along where I'm going to sew, I'll get a certain number. Okay, the number I get from that mark measuring is 19 and a half inches. So this other part of the band, I want to cut it at 90%, so 10% shorter. That will make sure the band doesn't gape at the neckline. And here on this curved area, it's going to make sure it stays close to the chest. 19 and a half times 0.9. This other section will be 17.55 inches. So remember the first section that we measured was 11 and 3 quarters. This next one will be 17 and a half. So adding these, that will be the length of my band. And 3 quarters plus 17.5. My band needs to be 29 and a quarter inch. That's how long my band's going to be. I'm going to draw this on a paper and show you what everything means. Okay, I have my neck band piece there. Four inches there, when you fold it together lengthwise, it would end up being two inches wide. And I've added a quarter of an inch there and a quarter of an inch there. So from that line to that line is four inches plus a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Remember the band had to be 29 and a quarter. Well, from there up to there, it's 29 and a quarter. This bit here is the hem, and that's where I've drawn the 3 8 seam allowance that is going to be used to finish the bottom of the band. Here is up to that notch there before the neckline starts curving in, and that was 11 and 3 quarters, that notch on the neckline. From here down, the band is exactly the same length as the cardigan. But from here, because this is all the neckline, this neckband piece is going to be a tad shorter than the cardigan, and you have to just pin it at the center back, match those notches, and then just stretch this band slightly to fit the neckline of the cardigan. It's only 10% shorter, so it's not much at all, and it'll just help this top part of the cardigan line nicely without gaping. If you did all the neckline one-to-one -one in the same length, you would have the gaping at the back of the neckline and in front of your chest, and that would not look very nice. So that is what it is separated into two sections there. This is the same length, but from here onwards, it's a little bit shorter than the neckline from that notch up. This is cut on the fold. This is the neckband. I had to put a seam in the center back, so I just added seam allowance to the end of the piece. I had intended to cut it on the fold. So this is the wrong side, and you're meant to fold them wrong sides together lengthwise. And I have put pins here further down where that mark is that needs to match the neckline. 
So basically this is the area that will need to stretch slightly to match the neckline but from here down it will match the rest of the centre front perfectly. So these bottom edges are raw, all you have to do is flip them right sides together and sew this close with 3 8 seam allowance. And this was calculated to be here when I drafted that band. So the bottoms are folded right sides together, this is the wrong side here, that's the right side there. And just sewn close 3 8 seam allowance, just a straight stitch. Once that's sewn, you can flip this and then the band at the bottom will be finished nice and neatly. So the same has to be done with the other side. I've got the cardigan all sewn up, very easy, raglan sleeves are in, all this is one continuous seam. The hem has been done with three quarters of an inch like I planned to do. So that's already been done with the twin needle, even the hem has been done on the sleeve. So all that's left is to put this band. You can see with white chalk, that mark that I had on the pattern, that's where this started curving up to the neckline. From here down, it's just straight. And this is where these are gonna match there. And if you look, they have the same length all the way to the bottom. You don't need to stretch the band to fit from here to there. It'll just be normal. But from here, all around to there, you will need to stretch the band a little bit to fit the neckline. So that is going to match the centre back there and that will match there. So from this notch all the way around there you will stretch this a little tiny bit. So from here to there the length is calculated at 90% or 10% shorter and that will just keep the band next to the body. It will be one continuous stitch. I'll just do this with the serger. I have drafted this to only have a quarter of an inch seam allowance. notice I do repeat a lot of things over and over just to see if in some way it can be easier to understand that way. I know that for a lot of people just the mention of uh, a percentage or maths um, might get your head spinning. Basically it's the same concept as a neckband. When you sew a neckband onto a knit garment whether it's a V or rounded this piece is always smaller than the neckline and that is what brings this in towards the chest and keeps it from gaping. You can't have a neckband piece that is one-to-one -one or the same circumference that you have on your garment. If you are tempted to do that, go ahead, but all this is gonna fall open and gape and it's not gonna look very nice. So that is why I divided my neck into two sections. I don't want from the bust down the band to be shorter or else the cardigan is just gonna pull up from the center front. That area doesn't need to be close to the body. It can be the same length. But from the bust up, from where I drew that mark there, all around this area, I did want that neckband to be closer and just come in a little bit. And it's not a huge amount that I made it shorter, only 10%. So that is why you see me multiplying by 0.9. If you consider that 100% is 1, if you subtract from that a 0.1, which is 10%, you just get 0.9. And this is the same way that you calculate neckbands, you know, when you multiply by 0.8 or by 0.85. In this case, that section from here up to the center back was multiplied by 0.9. So this little rectangle that I have here is only half of it. So it goes from the neck center back down to the hem on one side. Obviously you need to cut this on the fold or in my case I had to do a seam there because my fabric that I had left wasn't enough. A center back seam on a neckband is not a wrong thing. You know some patterns are drafted that way so it's never a wrong thing. At the bottom you see that I had drafted 3 8 of an inch so that this could be finished, flipped and have a clean finish on the edge. And if you've made these simple style cardigans before, you would know how to sew this technique. You know, I did take into account that my cardigan was already hemmed to calculate the length of this band because the band reaches up to the bottom and that's already been hemmed. If you can see that it's already been folded up. I decided to do just a three quarter inch hem 
and this is my simple simple raglan sleeve cardigan it's a sweater knit super loosely woven not much recovery at all that's why when I made it, I knew it was gonna fit sort of nice and loose. I knew I would have enough ease around the sleeves to wear a garment underneath and all of that. Just because of my fabric choice, you know? Um, I wouldn't recommend you use this type of sweater knit to make your t-shirt unless you want it to be extra baggy and all of that. So this is a sweater knit, I think is good for a sweater. <laughs> and just the fact that it's got raglan sleeves makes it awesome. I know the feet already. For the sleeves I just turned up and hemmed, I didn't do anything different there and here you can see my band, there is the center back seam right there and how it goes down the center front there is a slight curve and around there is where this had to be sort of stretched slightly to match the neckline but from the notch down was just so normal. So, 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 so easy to do, so easy to do. And when I tried it on for the first time, so exciting. Although I didn't have any doubts that it wasn't gonna fit properly because I've already made the t-shirts. It's just always interesting to see your vision come true. This is the most creative hack you have ever seen. But you can see now how you can turn a knit shirt, whether it had set in sleeves or raglan sleeves, any knit, type of top that you like the fit of that is not super tight you can see how you can turn it into a cardigan and I could have lengthened this and made it super long I could have made it shorter I mean there's so many possibilities here and I am extremely happy with my little cardigan so let's see how this one looks this is my neat rhapsody dress that I made a few months ago stripes love it I've got it on with some boots winter styling autumn styling um, just giving you ideas although I am in spring and I've got my Rockford cardigan which is black and a staple I will go over anything I like this length to use on top of dresses I also like really long ones but this is a nice length also this is also a very nice length You can see the hem is straight, there's no curve to it or anything, it was just hemmed with a twin needle and the band reaches the very end of the center that was already hemmed. Has a fit that is not tight or loose, I think it's just right at the front. Remember I took away some from the center front, uh, the t-shirt would have been cut on the fold but I knew I was going to be adding this on. So by taking away three quarters from the center and then adding these bands that are two inches, I get a really nice fit that just reaches the center, it can sort of open like that, it doesn't cross over, it's not like not covering the bust either, I think it's just right. Really love how that turned out, curve right there. Rhapsody dress in neat for the win, I love this, it's got like an open neckline and I think it goes really well with this neckline that is a little bit open, it goes into sort of like a V but it's not very low either, I think it's just good. Love it and the fit in the raglan sleeves is no mystery. I know that fits because I've already made the t-shirts before. So converting this into a kaidi was very, very enjoyable. Not having to worry about the fit at all. Just worrying about how to finish this center. Length of the sleeves. I lengthened my sleeve by two inches. It's sort of a standard adjustment I make for Love Notions patterns. And it was a good call because it's the length that I like. Otherwise it would just be above the wrist. I love this. I love my cardigan so much. It's so cool. It's gonna go over everything and it'll be a staple. cardigan not in a winter way <laughs> I would wear this dress and these types of open shoes and then if it got cold I could carry this around with me doesn't take up much space could fit in a bag and then I could be warm if it got colder in the afternoon which is really the case but I'm just giving you an idea <laughs> love it because it will go with everything and this length of cardigan will work with these skirts that are really not that full but are not straight either it's a-lined and I think it works really well with this style of cardigan 
So I'm very happy with this outfit. This is the Cadence top and dress, the shift style dress that I've added ties to. That's what I'm wearing underneath. Just a few minutes ago, I was out there sweating, doing a workout, changing into all these little outfits to film and photograph so that you could see. You for sure know what a staple a black cardigan is with a raglan sleeve that fits really well. It's just different to other cardigans that have a normal setting sleeve. I just really think if you find a raglan pattern that fits you well, it's just a really nice alternative to doing the typical sleeves, you know. I, I really love the look of a raglan sleeve. So having this cardigan now in this color, well black isn't a color, but it will go with everything. And I run really low on sweater knits in my stash. Like I probably have two more in there. So I just wanted to make the one that was going to be worn the most and that was the black one. So there you go. The other idea I had was to make a dress. And I had a very, very unconventional way of making this dress because I don't want to just lengthen the pattern and to make it just a normal, simple dress, right? I want to have a separate bodice and attach on a skirt. So I put on this Rockford raglan inside out. I tied an elastic around my waist so that the elastic could find the waist easily and just mark the shape and have it there. And then with a pen, I went in and drew so I'm going to show you that I actually filmed it for you. If you have made a Rockford raglan that you like the feet of or you want to make it and then you want to make a dress, I think this is just the most accurate way to mark a, a bodice that will fit you actually at your waist without having to guess or just measure. It's really hard to measure on a raglan pattern because the top here is on the sleeve, it's not on the neckline, so it's, it makes it harder to do flat pattern measurements, I find. So that was my approach, very practical. Also, if you have a bust, anything from a C cup and above, you will see that when you draw the shape of your waist, it's not going to be straight. It will curve down towards the center because the bust has a volume here and that takes up some length. So the waist length is longer on the front than it is on the back due to the bust. If you have a smaller chest, you'll find that the line you might draw is a little bit straighter. So it all depends on the body shape. So let's go ahead and see how this became into a dress and what I did to make the skirt process so, so easy, so, so easy. So let's go and see. got this Rockford raglan on inside out and I've tied on a little elastic so that it marks the height of my waist and with a friction pen I just drawn around on the front and the back where that is you can see some scribbles there so I'll just take this off now and compare it to the pattern piece and then mark it on the pattern piece so I can have a separate bodice and then I'll have a separate skirt to sew on that's my plan. This is the front, this is the back for view C and D, which is the one that is closer fitting to the body. The ones I've made in the past that sort of flare out a more swing style. But because I want this dress not to be so voluminous there, I chose this version. The feet at the top will be the same. And I've tried my t-shirt inside out, marked where my waist was, put my t-shirt right on top and marked on the pattern where that was. So you can see that my waist is more straight at the back but at the front it meets there these are the side seams but then it goes into a slight curve and that's normal because I have a bust there taking up space so I will need my bodice to have that slight curve like that in order for it to look level when it is actually on the body I'm going to cut this bit off and I'm going to actually add seam allowance for this little bodice right there then when I'm done, I can tape this back and I can make my raglan as per norm, as normal, but at least I know where my bodice is if I just want to use this as a bodice, like just hitting my waist right there. Now, if I measure this from there to there, from there to there, I think the front is a quarter of an inch longer if I measure like that than the back. 
those differences are negligible when your sewing needs, I find. And now if I take the Rhapsody skirt from the dress view from the Rhapsody and measure across there, it measures the same. So if you compare, I can use this skirt perfectly, the Rhapsody skirt, onto this bodice I've made for myself um, if I'm using the same size. I'm just going to mash these up. I'm going to use the same technique to unite these and do the casing inside with an elastic like I've done previously with a Rhapsody dress. So I'm excited to mash these two up. From the green line which is my natural waist, I have measured down half an inch because that's the amount that the Rhapsody dress uses to attach the bodice to the skirt. So on the top of the skirt there's half an inch seam allowance so I want to replicate that on this little bodice. So that blue line is where I'm going to cut my pattern piece and that's what I'm going to cut out of fabric. What I did with the skirt was cut out one first and then I placed the one I cut out right sides together with the other piece of fabric so that I could match these figures here. There are lots of rectangular sort of things around here so I wanted to match these at least on the side so that matches. Same as right there. There's no way to go wrong if you do it like this. You use one piece, you put it on the other and try to match the prints that you have. This is the back bodice and I do have a little scrap left of fabric so I might as well cut the back twice. I like cutting the back twice. It just gives the dress more structure. It feels better and it protects you against having undergarment line seen. It's only ITY so it's very lightweight so having the back lined is always good. After I had my body sorted I knew I wanted to attach on a skirt that would be gathered in with a casing just like I've done other dresses and I was going to draft one but then you know when light bulb moments happen and I thought what about the Rhapsody dress? The Rhapsody blouse is a pattern from 2017 I believe one of the most popular ones but it went through the update this year in April to improve the sizing and when that update happened Tammy added on a skirt to have a dress version. So on the blouse pattern you'll see a line where to cut to have a bodice and then you add on a separate skirt. So I suddenly remembered I had this dress I had made in knit fabric, rayon spandex with stripes. I have a video all about this by the way but I remembered how this skirt was larger because there was ease at the waist to achieve this gathering effect. I looked at my bodice and I, and I measured it at the waist and I saw that you know, there was a lot of ease there. It is a t-shirt, it's not super fitted. So I went to get my Rhapsody skirt pattern, measured up on the top, measured my bodice, and they measured exactly the same. How fortunate was that? So I didn't have to draft anything. All I did was make sure that they matched. And look, if you have a tiny discrepancy of like half an inch or quarter of an inch, just adjust them, either the bodice or the skirt, so that they can match. Easy peasy you have it you have a skirt piece there that you could use to put onto bodices like a bodice created on the Rockford Raglan which is not official but it is something that can be done so happy with my dress I made it with a really um, interesting print ITY I had in my stash it's not flowers or anything and it's got a lot of weird sort of rectangular stripe type features very strange print I would say it reminds me sort of like that Versace stuff. I don't know. I have no idea, but that's what it reminds me of. <laughs> so I did the back double. That's why you can see the main fabric there. All I did was cut it twice and just treat it as one piece. When I attached on the sleeves and everything, I just forgot that there were two layers there. That gives more structure to the back. I did lower this neckline as you saw by one and a half inches that was the first thing I did so the original one would be a bit higher. I've used the same neckband piece I just recalculated the new circumference because I've lowered the neckline and I used 85% of that new circumference to cut this neckband a little bit longer than the original one. So that's all I did there if you want to know everything about neckbands and how you can have total freedom with necklines because you can change them, you can raise them, you can lower them, you can do things. You can adapt those neckband pieces and binding pieces. I have a masterclass on the channel with everything you want to know about neckbands and bindings all in one video. So go ahead and look at that for more details about bands. The sleeves are short, there's twin needle hem and then we have 
the skirt of the Rhapsody and it fits really well. I was just careful to match up the side seams here where we have these black stripes going across. So that was the only area I really, really wanted to match. I couldn't walk around with not matching side seams <laughs> like that. So super nice. I am so, so, so happy with my dress. This is my Rockford bodice dress with a mash of the Rhapsody skirt from the Rhapsody dress. And love the mash. They matched perfectly at the height of my waist there. I made the skirt a tiny little bit shorter on the front so it's got a less dramatic curve on the side. Um, just as I imagined, I love the fit of the bodice. Having a bodice with raglan sleeves is different for a dress, not that common. So love it how it turned out. The casing in there is super comfortable. Um, super love it. Up closer you can see where my waist hits, it's exactly where the bodice ends and the only accurate way for me to do that was use a pre-existing Rockford I already made. There's no way to go wrong if you use something you already made when you want to do a hack. So you saw that there was a curve there but you can't see the curve now, it's because the bulk of my bust sort of evens that out and it looks straight. If I did a straight line across, this would happen, it would ride up because the bust would make it right up. Not happening because I did that curve that follows the shape of my body. When you draw it on yourself, you will see the curve happening there. Super comfy with the elastic. At the back, it finishes at my waist too. The back was straight and you can see on the side where I have pattern matched the sort of the design, but mainly the black stripes along the print. I really wanted those to match on both sides like that. It was the only area I focused on pattern matching all the rest doesn't really matter. Raglan sleeves fit really well, no surprise there because I've already made the pattern, these are short sleeves. And at the back I've got this piece double, just one on top of each other, it feels super nice on and it prevents you from seeing bra lines and things there. I think it's always a good idea when you're using ITY or rayon spandex to do that. When I've wanted to line the back and I don't have enough of the same fabric, I'll just use a scrap of something else that is lightweight as well. So a scrap of rayon spandex, anything, another ITY, anything will work to have the back double and it feels really nice on, it makes all the difference. When you use lightweight fabrics and you want your bodice to be a little bit fitted, this is not fitted, but it's not boxy and loose either. Another idea I have for this is to bring the bodice in a little bit so it doesn't have that ease for the gathers. Just bring it in closer to my actual waist and then attach on the skirt of maybe the Olympia dress or the Summer Basics dress. So then the skirt wouldn't be gathered here, so it would just be smooth here and then the skirt would flare out a little bit. So that's another idea I have for this bodice. Super excited, love the feet, just like I wanted it to be. together a Rockford raglan dress with a Rockford raglan cardigan just the best so I'll show you how they look together so I have my Rockford dress with my Rockford cardigan both items made from the same pattern they're totally different but the fit is the same the sleeves everything is all the same this one fits looser because this is a sweater knit that is loosely woven so it will have more ease because of that it will feel looser compared to this other one I look at my both garments together. I think they go super well. They are the same pattern but different. No one would ever know. <laughs> so I'm super happy with this outfit. The black cardigan will go with everything and I love the dress how it turned out. about view C, the one that has the asymmetric overlap. I really, really wanted to do that one and I was so uninspired as to what fabric to use. Yeah, I was just thinking, thinking, thinking while I made these two garments and then sort of time ran out. <laughs> 
but now I know what I would do. <laughs> I have some black cotton spandex. It's sort of a similar weight to this one. Very nice, it's lightweight. Um, a good amount of spandex in there. It's got a nice recovery. It's not those cotton spandex um, type fabrics that grow out of shape and it's not like that. It's nice. So I have some of that and I would make the whole raglan tee out of the black cotton spandex, the sleeves, everything. I would keep it at the shortened length. I would keep it three inches shorter than the original. Than the original. And the asymmetric piece that goes sewn on top, I also shorten it by three inches. And then I would put this lace on top of that. The asymmetric piece that goes all across the front and has an asymmetric hem would be made out of lace. And at the back, I would have the black. And I think it would be super cool. It would be like a really cool black t-shirt that's super comfortable to wear, but that has something extra on top with this black and white lace. I have used this exact same lace to make a La Bella Donna uh, top before. Um, I have quite a, quite a bit left over. I'd like to make a skirt as well. So those are ideas. If I can get them done during this week, I will be happy to share them with you. Remember, all Love Notions patterns are on sale, site-wide sale, except for the Glissando, until Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you would like to get any of your favorite patterns, don't forget to use my affiliate link if you would also like to support me because I receive a little commission from sales that go through the link. Thank you so much if you do use it. I will see you again very soon. This week is gonna be a lot of fun sewing for me and I hope a lot of fun viewing for you. So I will see you again very, very soon. Bye.